everyone. Today I'm wrapping up my visit to Forest Lawn Memorial Gardens here in Goodlitzville, Tennessee. I'm going to end my visit back where I started, here on Music Row. I wanted to do a standalone video of this person who was a star of the Grand Old Opry and the TV show Hee Haw, as well as being the victim of a very vicious crime. Here on Music Row, just a few steps from Hawkshaw Hawkins, Lefty Frizzell, and Cowboy Copus is the final resting place of David Stringbean Aikman and his wife Estelle. David Aikman was born in Jackson County, Kentucky on June the 17th, 1915. He got his first banjo when he was only 12 years old and began playing at local dances and events. Growing up during the Great Depression, times were hard and David eventually joined the Civilian Conservation Corps, which allowed him to support himself and his family. In the mid to late 1930s, David once again turned his attention to his musical talents and began performing on local radio stations and with several groups in the Lexington, Kentucky area. He also entered various talent contests and during one of those contests, he met a man named Asa Martin who invited David to become part of his band. Because of his long, lanky appearance, Martin began introducing David as String Bean. The name stuck, and for the rest of his career, he was known simply as String Bean. In 1943, String joined Bill Monroe and his Bluegrass Boys and stayed with them until 1945 when he left to join Willie Westbrook to form the country comedy team of String Bean and Cousin Wilbur. It should be noted that when String left the Bluegrass Boys, he was replaced by an up-and-coming badger player named Earl Scruggs. String Bean and Cousin Wilbur would join the Grand Old Opry where he would meet Grandpa Jones. Both String and Grandpa used a clawhammer style of banjo playing and would often perform together on the Opry. String and Grandpa would form a close and lasting friendship, and in addition to performing on the Opry, they were also neighbors and would tour together. In 1969, String and Grandpa Jones joined the cast of the country variety show Hee Haw. String's Hee Haw skit included being the scarecrow in the cornfield where he would deliver corny one-liners. The show was taped weeks in advance and his final appearance was during season five on March 23rd, 1974, which was aired several weeks after his death, which brings us to the tragic part of this story. String and his wife Estelle lived a modest and unassuming life in a small cabin in Ridgetop, Tennessee. Their only luxuries, a new Cadillac and a color TV. Growing up during the Great Depression, String was leery of banks and was known to carry large amounts of cash. And he was also known to stash large sums of money in cubby holes scattered throughout his cabin. On Saturday night, November 10, 1973, String and Estelle returned home after performing on the Grand Old Opry. As String and Estelle got out of their car, they were confronted by two men who shot and killed them. The motive was robbery. The next morning, Grandpa Jones stopped by to check on his friends and discovered the gruesome scene and called police. The police investigation resulted in two 23-year-old cousins, John and Marvin Brown, being arrested and convicted of the murder and robbery. At trial, each cousin claimed the other one actually killed the couple. Both men were sentenced to lengthy prison terms. Marvin Brown died in prison in 2003. 
the John Brown petitioned the state for parole, which was granted in 2014. He had served 41 years of his 198 year sentence. After the funeral service that was attended by many of the stars of the Grand Ole Opry, String Bean and Estelle were laid to rest here on Music Row at Forest Lawn Memorial Gardens in Goodlitzville, Tennessee. In the years after String and Estelle's death, their dear friend Grandpa Jones continued to perform on Hee Haw and on the Grand Ole Opry. He would often mention his friend determined not to let his memory die. Grandpa Jones died in 1998 and is buried just a few miles north of here at the Luton's Memorial United Methodist Church. I visited his grave in an earlier video and I'll put a link to that in the description below. This is where I'm going to end this video here at Forest Lawn Memorial Gardens in Goodlitzville, Tennessee. I hope you've enjoyed our visit here. If you did, please give me a thumbs up below. And if you have a favorite memory of String Bean or any of the stars that we visited in this video or the two previous ones, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. I'm just beginning my visit to Nashville. There's plenty more of these videos to come. So if you want to be notified when they go live, be sure to ring that bell and subscribe. Now, until next time, just remember, life is a wonderful journey. Be sure to take time and enjoy it, and I'll see you down the road. So long, everyone.